Well, good news. My pair of MPP Solar 6548s just showed up. Combined weight, 106 pounds. Not small. Just like Christmas. Yeah. Well, that video was a week ago. And as you can see, we have the inverters mounted on the wall. Head units fit like such. Got to put in a good word for Ian over at Watts 24-7. Heck of a company to work with. Placed an order on Tuesday. They were across half the country and on my driveway in less than three days. So you can't, you can't beat that. Um, one thing I would mention to uh, Ian and MP, MPP Solar, there is the, uh, the uh, solar input right here. There's two screws. I would highly advise that these be removed and uh, shipped, stored inside. And there's only a couple of four spade terminals because on one of these units, the lower corner here had gotten a good pop. Uh, must have had a gorilla somewhere along in shipping. And this plate here was bent, the bottom of this panel was bent, and one of these units was damaged a little bit on the corner and pushed up. So I used the heat gun to bring it back to where it's supposed to be. So uh, at any rate, I would uh, highly suggest that that be done. Uh, but I, I can't, I can't uh, uh, compliment them enough at how fast they turned them around, reasonable price uh, over there at uh, Watts 24-7. Uh, thank you again, Ian. Um, what you can do uh, with these is uh, mount them onto some hardy board or uh, 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 backer board. And I found some nice screws at backer board screws. You can find those at uh, Home Depot. And you got to find those over in the area where they actually have these on the shelf. Because if you look where the fasteners are, you won't necessarily find them there. Uh, we have the generator, emergency generator input. We got a Predator uh, 9500 inverter generator and a 50 amp cord we use with it. We change the connection at the generator end uh, to the 30. But at any rate, we didn't want any have any power loss. We could run the generator a good distance away in case we need to uh, supplement the, the solar system or, or whatever. But it's nice to have always have a good generator to back up. Uh, we have the interlock panels on the opposite side on the outside here got to run interlocks and uh, that's uh, pretty much where we are right now we're waiting for the batteries and ordered those through Amazon and that and that's through uh, uh, a company called eel and they're not late yet but uh, they were supposedly in Rancho Cucamonga uh, a week ago and they've been sitting there I think but it's hard to trace things right now uh, could be still on a freighter I don't know, but they made the shipper uh, paperwork up uh, for FedEx, and I got a notice, and the the delivery date came and gone. So we'll see how they do. They're not late yet, so I'd love to give them a great review. So uh, at any rate, uh, we have 16 batteries coming uh, from uh, Eel Batteries uh, through Amazon. Amazon's been making a ton of money on, off of me lately. <laughs> so we've got uh, some Helltech uh, uh, active equalizer. They call it BMS, but it's not really a BMS. It's actually just an active equalizer or balancer. And we have uh, some extension leads. I don't know why they don't make these leads long enough, but I found some nice silicone leads on Amazon. Or collars, too. We have uh, some 2-watt cable. American made, believe it or not. How do you like that? Nice stuff. Uh, 20 feet of the red, 10 feet of the black. We're going to be using these between the cells instead of uh, bus bars uh, diagonally. We'll have all the terminals, uh, polarities all on the same side. And then we have our heat shrink with the adhesive line. And we have... Uh, some cell term lugs. These have the uh, uh, quarter inch hole in those or for six millimeter for the terminals on the batteries. And we have the 
uh, five sixteenths for the interim uh, terminals and also fit the uh, terminals that are up inside the inverters. Uh, some discharge resistors, good idea. We have these little lugs here. I don't know if we'll use these. Um, a lot of people had bad luck, including myself, crimping these and making sure they got good contact. So I think we're gonna go with these uh, where we can take the wire, strip the wire, fold it over double, and crimp the crap out of it, and not have to worry about uh, uh, trying to crimp through this heat shrink material. And then we can heat shrink them later with some clear heat shrink right over the outside. We have some bevel washers, and I like these because they flatten out right before they reach full torque uh, on the terminals. So you're always going to have uh, pressure on those terminals regardless. Nothing's gonna come loose. Uh, it'll it'll let everything move and and whatnot for the interim. And we'll we'll end up using these lugs. We we'll put these lugs on on the terminals, then the bevel washers, then these, and little flange nuts on top of all of that. And we have this little meter for the internal resistance. Really nice, interesting, cute little leads. The double probes. You got to use this before you hook your batteries up, you have any uh, uh, bus bars or term anything on those terminals, your readings will be worthless. Don't even bother. Found this neat little transfer switch. Amazon, couldn't resist it. 30 bucks. Look at all those. I, th I believe each contact is rated at 62 amps. I'm not gonna be pushing that. I can always double things up to get more current through it. Little box. Supposed to come with the hardware, at least the picture shows it on Amazon, doesn't? About 12, 13 bucks, I think it was. 30 bucks for that, it's not a bad deal. Uh, at any rate, I uh, found these silicone mats. Uh, these measure 15.7 by 78.7, and they say they're 50,000 thick. I measured them a consistent 45. I'm gonna use those, cut them up, I put them between the cells for when it compress the cells and this should be enough for the outside uh, plates as well as between all the cells and you'll have nice even pressure on your cells without any high pressure points and also work as a, an, an additional insulator. Uh, one thing too is, is if you your cells are concave as some new shell, uh, cells are before you've charged them uh, you'll have some concave uh, to them you'll trap an air bubble in there with these because they'll seal. So what you're gonna wanna do is run a real thin thread across that battery as you clamp these up. And you just tape it to the outside uh, uh, width uh, of, or the outside edge of the cell so you don't get the tape in between, but just the thread. And that'll wick the air out as the cells uh, start to expand and compress and, and equalize. So that's a neat little thing we uh, wanna do with there. Uh, here's a daily BMS. We have a 300 amp. It does have a temperature probe. Interesting. Um, probably have to extend that to get to the batteries. Short leads. So <laughs> we'll see how that works out. This should be nice. And nice heavy duty leads. Look at the size of those two leads on there. A little Bluetooth BMS for the, uh, to get to the uh, uh, insides and, and have a look around uh, on your on your phone to see what what it's doing in the in preset it this is a smart unit so you're able to get inside um, the programming and uh, uh, change it for your cell chemistry uh, depending on what you want and where you want the things to cut off excellent idea uh, you don't want to have a dumb BMS <laughs> so at, at any rate uh, we also have a, a, a pallet full of uh, solar cells uh, coming in, uh, solar panels, I should say, coming in uh, tomorrow, a whole pallet of the 440 watt panels uh, that uh, Will recommended, and I'll do a review on those depending on what condition they show up in and uh, how they look. And I'll do a test on them, see what their open circuit voltage is and everything, and uh, it should be a lot of fun. It's been expensive. Will, you've cost me a lot of money, but I'm pretty sure I'll be making it back. Thanks again.